If a person is dealing with significant nutrient deficiencies, it can cause some real health issues. And so in this video, I'm going to share seven early warning signs of specific nutrient deficiencies and steps you can take to turn it around. Let's jump in. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So the first sign that we want to look at is brittle thin or even spoon shaped nails. And when the nail is really thin or brittle or it breaks really easy or it just kind of looks really thin, there's usually either an iron or a protein issue. And you know, when we bring in protein, we should break that down into amino acids. And those amino acids are the building blocks of that snail structure. We want those amino acids there to build that structure. So when they're really weak and not being built correctly, there's usually a person is not consuming enough protein, but more often it's about their inability to break that protein down. Usually they're not making enough stomach acid to really acidify that protein and break it down so that the body can break it down into those amino acids. And let's look over at this paper here on spoon nails as some people call it. And they say the spoon shape abnormality observed in severe chronic iron deficiency anemia is usually reversible with replenishment of iron stores through food sources containing high iron content or medical management by taking iron supplements. And so iron can be a big deal with this too. We don't like to see people supplement with a whole lot of iron, uh, just because iron supplements uh, have the ability to be very constipating for a lot of people. If someone were to use like grass-fed liver pills, those contain iron along with other cofactors that make that iron a little bit easier to use. But in most cases, it's about an inability to break that protein down. When someone can't get enough iron and they're dealing with iron deficiency issues, it's usually because they can't break that protein down and get that iron out of it. And iron is very important for the oxygenation kind of stuff at the tissues. To get that oxygen where it needs to be, we need iron to transport that oxygen. So that can be very important when you're dealing with these. So when we're looking at this sign, that's a strong sign of either iron deficiency or a person not consuming or digesting protein well enough. The next sign is white spots or, or ridges on the nail. And this often has to do with the deficiency in zinc or calcium. And especially with the white spots, it can also often have to do with calcium displacement. A lot of people say these things that show signs of possible calcium deficiency, and they're like, oh, well, let's just take buckets of calcium. And a lot of times supplementing with too much calcium can cause some troubles. In a lot of situations, it's about calcium displacement. So if someone's consuming way too many carbs or sugars, it has the ability to pull calcium out of the tissues where it's supposed to be because calcium likes to follow sugar, just like you did when you were the ice cream chuck chaser, you know, when you were eight years old. Calcium follows sugar. So if we're consuming too much sugar, we're displacing that calcium from where it should be. It starts to follow this sugar. We burn up the sugar and then the calcium just kind of gets dropped and even deposited in places where it really shouldn't be. So the body looks for ways to get rid of that. So one thing that you could look at, this is not a diagnostic thing, but it can give you signs, is you can look at your urine pH at least two hours after a meal, but not first thing in the morning. And if that urine pH is like 6.1, 6.2 or higher, that's a strong sign that someone is peeing out too much calcium. So in a lot of those cases, they're usually consuming too many carbs and sugars that is displacing that calcium. So that can be important. And zinc is important in this topic too. And a lot of people become deficient in zinc because the body uses zinc for a lot of purposes, especially immune type purposes. So if someone has some kind of chronic low grade infection or some kind of digestive overgrowth where the body's needing to use that immune system a whole lot, they may be burning up a little bit too much zinc. Supplementing with some zinc can be a good idea. I don't like to see people supplement with a whole lot, just maybe a small amount on each day can be beneficial. But again, sometimes if someone can't access these minerals, there are digestive malfunctions going on, restricting their ability to bring those minerals in. 
Our next sign is going to be cracked or dry lips, especially in the, the corners of the mouth. I think some people call it like chelitis or chiliosis sometimes. And this can be a deal with B vitamins or iron deficiency. Again, iron is important for that oxygen transport stuff. And B vitamins are essential for skin repair type processes. And especially B2, B3, or B6. But if someone's going to supplement with specific B vitamins, I really like to see them take also a B complex. Because if you just supplement with just like B6, a lot of times the body can't utilize it as well because it doesn't have all the other cofactors needed. So maybe if they found out, oh, I'm really deficient in B6, so I'm going to supplement with B6, but then maybe once or twice a week, I'll also take a B complex just to make sure that the body has those nutrients available. And when we're looking at these issues with iron problems, sometimes it's not that the person doesn't have enough iron and that's not what's restricting the oxygen transport and oxygen getting to the tissues like it needs to be. Sometimes the blood is leaning too far on that alkaline side. And that's when the Bohr effect kicks in and it tells us that when the blood is leaning too alkaline, that oxygen can't get down to the tissues where it needs to be because it's being kind of trapped in the blood. So I'll put a link in the description below for our video on oxygen utilization issues. If you think that might be an issue for you, you can dig a little bit deeper into that one. Our next sign is dry, flaky skin. And this often has to do with fatty acids or vitamin A or zinc deficiency issues. An interesting thing with zinc, when we're talking about some of these deficiencies, it's not always about, oh, we're not eating enough of the right foods. A lot of people eat really great food, but if they can't break it down, it's kind of like they're not eating that food because they're not able to break it down to get the nutrients out of that. And the body needs zinc to be able to produce hydrochloric acid, that stomach acid that helps us break down our food. And if someone isn't producing enough stomach acid, they can't break their food down well enough to get the minerals out of that food. So they can get stuck in this cycle of broken digestion of not having enough minerals to produce that hydrochloric acid and not being able to break down the food well enough to get the minerals to give the body what it needs to make that hydrochloric acid. But for issues like this, these fatty acids, vitamin A, these, these are all things that are important for skin turnover and rebuilding of that skin and hydration and repair. So those can be important and you can see this as a sign sometimes. We're going to talk more about vitamin A in just a minute. Our next sign is dark circles under the eyes. This often has to do with iron, vitamin C, or electrolyte imbalances. And those electrolyte imbalances could be in either direction. Maybe someone doesn't have enough electrolytes because they're not bringing them in, or someone has too many electrolytes. Maybe they're dealing with a high blood pressure issue where the body is not getting rid of things like it really should. And vitamin C is very important for rebuilding and repairing of those structures. So a lack of vitamin C can be an issue. But in most cases, beyond like a lack of sleep, like a lack of sleep we know can cause those dark circles under your eyes. But in most cases, it's going to be an iron issue. And you'll see this a lot with people that are vegan and they're like, oh, well, I'm eating these vegetables with iron, but it's a different type of iron. And it's not as accessible to the body as iron that you would find in animal sources. And you'll especially see this a lot like with kids that their parents are like, hey, you should be a vegan because that's the healthiest thing to do. And you'll start to see these dark circles under these little kids' eyes, which they're really not old enough to be, you know, that beaten down yet. Um, but that's very common to see. So most common, this has to do with an iron deficiency issue. And in a lot of cases, it's more about an inability to digest that protein than it is them not eating it or not consuming it. Now, this is very important, a yellow or light colored stool is a very strong sign that bile is not flowing correctly. And bile is this soapy substance that's made in the liver and then it's stored in the gallbladder. But this bile helps us emulsify or break down our dietary fats. And bile is this dark green color and that's what helps make our stool a dark brown color. So when you're seeing a light colored stool like this, it's usually because bile is not flowing correctly. So what that means is when we can't emulsify our dietary fats, it means that it makes it very difficult for us to access fat soluble vitamins like A, E, D, and K. So when we're looking at some of these issues, like these vitamin A deficiency problems, in most cases, it's about an inability to break those dietary fats down so that we can access fat soluble vitamins like vitamin A. So I don't like to supplement with a lot of vitamin A. If someone's going to supplement with vitamin A, I like them to use a small amount or to use some type of multivitamin that contains vitamin A in it 
because excessive vitamin A often can create a lot of vitamin A toxicity issues and that can create a whole other world of problems. Again, this is usually not about a person needing to supplement with vitamin A. It's about they need to help the body function the way that it's supposed to function. They need to take steps to thin that bile out so that that can flow correctly. So if you think that might be a problem for you, we'll put a link in the description below for our video on five steps to improve bile flow that that can help you correct that problem. And finally, we'll look at this chicken skin or keratosis. Phrenoderma is a similar issue as well. We'll look at this study here on a clinical study of 125 patients with phrenoderma. And they say extremely low levels of serum vitamin A has been reported secondary to vitamin A malabsorption following small bowel bypass surgery for obesity, colectomy, and in pancreatic insufficiency. All these patients presented with this phrenoderma and responded to vitamin A therapy. So a lot of these issues that we're talking about are issues where we see digestive malfunctions that are restricting uh, that bile from flowing correctly. And a lot of times it's a lack of stomach acid that isn't triggering these other things like the pancreas to work correctly or the bile to flow correctly. But they're saying that they really respond well to vitamin A therapy. So a lot of times they're just gonna say, hey, just cram all this vitamin A and eventually enough vitamin A will accumulate to correct these skin issues. But we kind of see that if you can just help the body you know, process that vitamin A a little bit better, that can be important. Um, but essential fatty acids can also be important with these issues. And these are issues usually where you see like the, the raised bumps, you know, on the skin kind of thing, especially like on the chicken skin thing with the back of the arm. It's really common to see this with girls who are on birth control. And birth control, when you raise estrogen, elevated estrogen has the ability to thicken up our bile so it can't flow correctly and then that makes it hard for us to access these fat soluble vitamins like we talked about. We talk more about this high estrogen issue and I share some studies that go over that in our video on full digestive reset. And I hope that this gives you some insights on some things to look out for. But if you're dealing with any of these things that indicate that maybe you can't break down protein correctly or maybe your bile isn't flowing well enough to access those fat soluble vitamins, you can jump over and learn how to really correct those issues with our video on full digestive reset. I can't wait to hear about your results.